Okay, so how do we start? What is, well, for, before we start, what is regular language? Well, that's regular language right there. That's just like English or whatever language you're talking about. What's math language? Math language is? Go for it. Okay, so 3n equals 30. Now that's not um, necessarily going to be the right one, although maybe it is, for this one. But that's math language. Does it represent the same thing as what the natural language states? So before we get to that, we're going to write a let statement. A let statement defines a variable. And then we're going to turn the equation, turn it into an equation to model each sentence. So our let statement is going to look like this. Let, and I'm going to use n because I like that you picked that number. Let n represent a number. The examples that we're doing today are a little simplistic. The ones that we're going to get to eventually are going to be kind of like the ones we were doing before where it's more of a question. This one's not asking a question, but it's talking about some number. Three times some number that we don't know. So that's N. That's our unknown or X, whatever you want to use. Three times a number. Well, hold on before you answer it. Is 3N, like you said. So 3n, because that's three times a number. Our number is n, three times a number, three times n, 3n. Is, is the equal sign, n is 30, so very good. Okay, now it doesn't say to solve, it just says turn it into an equation to model the situation. So you're right, the answer would be 10 in this case, but we don't actually have to solve it, we just have to set it up. But it says write a let statement and then an equation. A number decrease two is 10, so let x, or what, do you, what variable do you want to use? Somebody throw out a variable. Let's pick something different from n. Would you say? B, good. Let, we'll use y next. Let b represent a number or the number, that part we're not going to worry too much about. A number decrease 2. What does that mean? Good. So we take the number, subtract 2. Is 10 means equals 10. A uh, number, so again, let, we're going to use y this time, y represent a number, a number divided by 4. So how do I do that one? or y over 4 equals 4, either way you write it. That's kind of the way we like to write it. So y divided by 4 equals 4, but you know both kind of fit, right? It's not necessarily about right or wrong, but the one on the right is uh, the way that we're starting to get more used to, in particular in high school. Very good. And again, then you could go and use the skills that we've been working on to go ahead and solve these. Decreasing a number by one leaves six. So it worded slightly differently, but I think you can probably do this one. So I'm going to ask you to try it on your own. Don't forget your let statement.
What variable did you use? Huh? S? S? A. A, good. Anybody else? N. N, okay. You can use the same one every time. Like, it doesn't make a difference, right? Anybody use something different? I used X. Did you get X minus 1 equals 6? A number, decreasing a number by 1. So I take a number and decrease it by 1. So X minus 1 or N minus 1, A minus 1, S minus 1, whatever it is, leaves you with 6, so that means equals 6. This next one, again, is a little bit different. 11 decreased by a number is 4. So let, let's start with that. So I used A. Again, pick whatever you like, pick your favorite. Now, how do you write the math sentence that means the same thing as this? Yeah, very good. 11 decreased by a number. So the number is the thing we don't know. 11 decreased by A, or whatever num whatever letter you pick, is 4. So is, you can see, kind of means equals. So equals 4. Okay, last one of these, 7 more than a number is 14. So let whatever you want represent the number. What does seven more than a number mean? Adding, good. So I take my, I chose M. Seven more than M is M plus seven. Whatever M is, if M is three, I add seven, I get 10. If M is 20, I add seven, I get 27, right? This is how it works. We don't know what M is. Then when it says is 14, we can, Complete that with equals 14. So this is the kind of question that we're going to be looking at moving. Yeah, do you have a question? Does it matter if it's capitalized or just? No. That being said, it's more standard that we use lowercase for this kind of thing, but there are other times where we use capital letters. Um, in specific situations, but it's not really about being right or wrong. So there are conventions, for our class, I think it won't really come up, it won't really matter. Um, but there are conventions about certain types of math where we specifically use capital letters, and then other places where we generally don't but if you define it as capital M and then use capital M, you should be consistent, but it, it's fine. Don't switch back and forth in one question. Um, but generally speaking, we, we tend to use lowercase, I would say. Okay? So this is the kind of question that we're going to eventually be setting up and solving. Okay? But for this one, we're just writing let statements and the equation. The total number of, although the solving is probably not going to be the hard part, so if you had to do that, you could. Write the necessary let statements, then an equation to model the situation. Now, the total number of students who attend is 220. There are 40 more grade nines than there are grade tens. How many students of each grade attend the dance? In word problems throughout high school math, almost all the time, not quite all the time, but almost all the time, your let statement is going to be let A represent the thing you're trying to find. Now we're trying to find the number of grade nines and tens. So you just pick. So let 
A represent the number of, do you want to do grade nines or tens? Grade nines. Now we have to do a second let statement. Then, if there are 40 more grade nines, what do I write for the number of grade tens? This can be a little bit tricky. 40 fewer than the number of grade nines. Um, a number decrease 2 is 10, so a number decrease 2. If A is the number of grade 9s and we're decreasing it by 40, there's 40 fewer, there's 40 less, so A minus 40 is the number of grade 10s. This can be tricky. One strategy that I find works really well, imagine a number of grade nines. Somebody just, it has nothing to do with this question, just what could be a number of grade nines in a school? Just give me an easy number. 110. And there's 40 more grade nines, so how many grade tens would there be? 70? 70 plus 40 is 110. So there's 40 more grade nines. What's another number? How about 200? So how many grade tens would there be? 160. What's the relationship there? Well, I'm always subtracting to get the number of grade tens. Always subtracting. So the number of grade tens is A minus 40. That strategy, folks, is picking some real numbers and thinking about real situations of numbers. I don't care that those numbers are actually solving this equation. I just care that they are uh, possible numbers that I could think of, right? So again, if there were 100 grade nines, there would be 40 fewer grade tens so that there are 40 more grade nines or 110 or 200 and so on. And you can look at the relationship between those to figure out how to write that. Hopefully, you know it's either A minus 40 or A plus 40. But you just have to get it in the right direction. You've got to get the right one. Now, how do we write an equation? What happens if the total number of students is 220? Doesn't that mean the number of grade nines plus the number of grade tens is 220. So what's the number of grade nines? Not what's the answer. What's the number of grade nines? No. Isn't it A? That's why it's a bit of a trick question. What's the number of grade tens? Forty fewer, so A minus forty. That's what our let statements tell us. So there's your grade nines. There's your grade tens. Add them together and gives you the total number of students. Now we could go ahead and solve that. A plus A is 2A minus 40. Move the 40 over, divide by 2. Like, and you can go ahead and try that and check your answer if you want to see if it makes sense. Because sometimes that does help. But this question doesn't actually ask us to solve it. But that's what we're going to do next is these kind of word problems where you do let statements and then set them up and actually solve them.
But really think about this. We chose A to represent the number of grade nines, and since there's 40 more of them, that means the number of grade tens, I have to subtract 40 to get the number of grade tens. And then it says the total is 220. So the number of grade nines plus the number of grade tens is 220. Like that's something everybody understands. If I told you that there were, um, I don't know, 150 grade nines and 100 grade tens, you'd be like, okay, so there's 250 students. Like you would just add them up. You would understand that. So don't overthink this. This is real world stuff. Make sense of it in your real world understanding of these relationships. The total number who attended the dance is 220. So add the grade nines and tens together to get 220. Well, what is the grade nines? A. What is grade tens? A minus 40. That's what we said in our let statements. Add them together. That gives us our total. And then if you had to, you could go and solve for A.